those of you that are tuned in. Let's see what we can uh, accomplish today, okay? Decided, I have no idea why I decided this, but sometimes it's just a whim. And by that, what I mean is um, I'm gonna do a 24 by 30 today, not an 18, say an 18 by 24 would be oh, about that big. So they're going quite a bit larger. Um, working on a piece of uh, um, hardboard that I just sewed with kind of a, oh, uh, some white, a little bit of black, and a little bit of uh, kind of a cat red light acrylic. So it's acrylic uh, underpainted, and which means a couple things. Number one, the paint is going to absorb very quickly into this. I, I, I know that that's just basically how it goes, unless I give it a coat of some sort of, uh, oil of some sort over it, then it'll it'll uh, stay. So I, I'm aware of that. The other thing that I'm doing today is I'm painting relatively high key. Nothing is exceedingly dark. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. So as we, hardboard is um, basically a masonite board? Or? Hardboard is basically a form of what we would call masonite. I actually have a piece here, a 16 by 20 piece. And I can, it is untoned, so it is let's say a 16 by 20 piece of hardboard, which is basically like this. So, all right. Just gessoed and toned. Gessoed and toned. Just one layer. Sometimes I'll put two or three layers on and give it a little texture. This time I just put one layer on. Um, and it just, I had, I didn't know what I was gonna paint on it. So when I gessoed it, sometimes it's really nice to do that. But we're gonna do this very quick drawing. Um, right about, we're going to condense this thing. So if you take a look at this format, it's a longer format. And this is a shorter. So I'm going to condense some of these things. And that's very often, uh, if I'm painting on location, I'll do the same darn thing. But I want to get a lot of information in there. So you don't have to be ex extremely true to your, um, to your subjects. But this is kind of an approximation of these hills, what I'm going to do in here. And the shadows, ground planes, this is uh, along the um, 101 corridor in, in California. Um, and we're gonna put, let's kind of place this guy, okay? So we're gonna place this guy right about here. This guy meaning? This guy meaning the barn. We, I call him, it's very sexist, I know. This guy. The barn. The barn. And I'm going to do it about there, there. That feels pretty good. I don't want to uh, diminish the drawing side of it, of, of any of one of the paintings, whether you're drawing with line as I am here, or whether you're drawing with shape. The drawing is really the underpinning of the whole painting. If that drawing is off. Now, there are certain types of subjects that you can do where your drawing might not be as crucial. Generally, that would revolve around organic things, rock cliffs, um, things like trees. So you can, you can be a little off in, but when you're dealing with any architectural form, figurative form, animal form, um, the, the drawing is gonna become much more crucial. That doesn't mean you can't make a building bigger or fatter or uh, somewhere along that line. I see that this tree is sitting below where the barn is. So that tree sitting about here. So we're just gonna kind of indicate where it goes because I'm gonna deal a lot with the drawing in terms of the shape as I paint into it. So it's a little architectural structure back behind. All we're doing is we're indicating, we want to indicate about where the top of this tree is. We have a lot of close value back in here. We're going to try and separate this a little bit, keeping this where it's at and pushing these back a little in terms of value. When uh, a lot of times I, I use kind of terminology, push it back means uh, put it back in space in terms of its value, because we're not dealing with scale. We're dealing with value when we get into areas like this. Top of the tree, we're going to put it up about here. 
And then there's another hill that intersects about there. And we don't want to do too much more drawing. I'm really going to deal with more of it as shape. Now, if I were doing a figurative piece or an animal piece, I might be, uh, I might be inclined to do a little bit more of a refined type of a drawing to solve some of the uh, anatomical proportional problems. But in this case, um, it's a much more organic painting, meaning that it's not as as precision oriented in terms of organic can mean it can be a little bit more free form. Some smaller trees back here, back in here. And there's this one lone tree up here. This nice little architectural element. I love the little accents of like fences. There's cars and things, but I'm not gonna put those in. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do in the beginning. I don't even know if you can see that very well. I'm gonna grab one of my little gesso brushes that I use all the time. I'm gonna get that sky in right away. And so I'm gonna mix a little bit of my medium, which is a little bit of linseed oil, a um, little solvent-free gel and uh, turp. I'm gonna mix those three together and come in with kind of a blue-green sky, which is kind of how I see that. Now for that, I'm using ultramarine blue, white, and Naples yellow. The Naples really, in this case, is gonna be kind of a, one of my workhorse colors. And where you will see um, a change occur is as in the darks. As I lay the darks in, it will absorb into this uh, surface a little bit more readily than it might if it were uh, canvas. Can you run through the palette again? Yeah, my palette today, Naples yellow. And then I have some titanium buff laid down. I, and I. I think that's gonna be a nice color because rather than use the white right away, I, I will use a titanium buff, which tends to be the similar value as in Naples, but a lot grayer. It still, is, I, I think it slightly falls into the warm hue, but it's a little bit grayer of a color. And so uh, then I have titanium white, which I'm, it looks to me like I'm probably gonna even need to lay more out because uh, on a high key painting, uh, meaning a painting that doesn't have a tremendous amount of darks into it. Uh, a high key painting, generally you're gonna use a lot, lot more of your <clears throat> lighter colors. Well, just you just think about what high key is, meaning the light. Uh, generally that kind of stands to reason. And we've got kind of the sky covered, good enough. Now, uh, I wanna always relate, I always relate like to at least relate this to the concept of a plain air piece. And so plain air piece. So I get the sky laid in and I get the sky approximately the similar value that I want, and as close as I can to the color, but I get it in that realm, all right? Now what that means is I can go back and change, I can darken it, I can intensify it in color, I can do a lot of different things as, I, as we, the, the painting continues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the far, everything that is the furthest back, we're going to paint it closer to the value of the sky. Everything that comes forward, we're going to get just a little bit darker until we get up to these areas. Now, one of the things that I want to mention, and when you're going to do a high key painting, is very helpful, is to mix up the darkest color. And this is something I learned as a student. Uh, mix up the, what you think is going to be the darkest color that you're going to use. So I'm gonna do that right now just for the heck of it. Normally I wouldn't do it, but for the sake of showing you, I'm going to do that. Um, and this is about as dark as I think I'm gonna go, right about here. No, no, no. Boy, see that tells me how dark this is. Because this surface is a little bit darker than um, a value that I, that I generally paint on. I generally paint on a little bit of a lighter. So I think this is probably gonna be about here. And I'm now to show you how far away I am from a dark, just, just so you can see, I am gonna mix up the darkest dark I can do. And I'm just gonna lay it right next to it. I'll wipe it out later. So 
that looks dark. That's as dark pretty much as I could go. So you can see that I'm a ways from there. So let's keep moving conceptually from the background, which is the farthest thing back is the sky. The next thing back is this hill. So we're gonna take, we're gonna kind of match that value a little bit, a little bit bluer, a little bit more blue, I should say, and a little bit of brown mixed into it. What? Do you have burnt sienna on the palette too? We kind of oh, let it. me finish my palette. Yeah, I didn't. It's okay. I just wanted to write, write it down. I left you hanging, didn't I? Okay, um, just a little bit. So, uh, titanium white, then we go uh, yellow ochre. I have burnt sienna. I have a cat orange hue. I don't know if I'm gonna use that at all. I have a lizard and crimson. I might use it a little bit, but I doubt it. Uh, ultramarine blue, sap green, and asphaltum. Now, burnt umber would have worked just as well in this case. Okay, I thought I had it. I just wanted to make sure. What was that? I thought I had it, I just wanted to make sure. And if I use the either one of the warms, it's just going to be to, to gray one of my cools because it tends to be a cooler painting. So I'm going to start with this. This is lighter than it is in reality. And I got enough medium in it that I can move the paint around without having to reload my brush constantly. Went a little darker with it. And what I did is I added a little more blue and to counter that I added just a touch of, of uh, the um, burnt sienna to that. But closing that edge, I make it feel like trees and I also keep that edge softer. So it, it, it deals with two elements. I don't want the edges in the background because otherwise sharp edges are gonna come forward. All right, the, and a strong value contrast will come forward and strong color will come forward. Those three elements, again, value contrast, color, and hard edges. So we wanna kind of don't let any of those things happen, hopefully in the background, if I can help it. And I can help it. So we're gonna start with that. It gets a little cool, warmer in here because the light is coming from this point. You can tell this side is lighter than this side. And I can see right there, they get, so I'm going to throw a little bit of, of the, um, what is that, unbleached titanium. And we're just going to, you see how, just push it right into that color. Now it went way too light too quickly. So I just push it back. Since I've got that nice um, kind of blue color below, I can kind of just keep pushing it back. And each time I stroke over it, it will push itself back and become closer to that background color. So we've got a little bit of light happening on that side, which is fine. Now I'm gonna come to this mountain, which is a little bit, well, there's a little bit of light now that I see it, right about here. I could put that in now or later, but I'll put it in now. It's a little lighter than I wanted, but I'm gonna leave it alone for right now, maybe a little bit here. A little variation back there, but we don't fuss on it too much. So I'm going back to this color and I'm gonna make a darker version of that color by adding more blue, maybe a little, Asphaltum, or, or now I would, it went way too dark. So when I when that happens, start go back, add more white, add more blue, and come up with a color that you think is going to work, and then test it. So I'm going to test it right here, or right here, either one of those two areas. Let's test it that. Oh, that looks pretty good. I'm going to add a little more blue to it as well. All right, we're gonna live with that. That looks, feels really good to me. Once again, I don't want these edges to get too sharp. This, this is a background hill. And if I, I've already got a little bit of value contrast there. You just approximate the feeling of the tree line that you begin to see on the edge of that mountain or hill, I guess we should call it, not a mountain. For some of you in Kansas, you might call it a mountain. 
just by darkening the value a little bit, you're bringing it. Yeah, I'm moving it forward just a touch. I may be, I may have pushed it too far. I'm standing back to double check. No, I don't think I, I think I'm about right. Hopefully you've mixed up enough of it. If you haven't, what you do is you mix it up again. I never worry, and I know I've mentioned this many, many, I never worry if I mix up, when I'm painting nature, if I, it, I shouldn't even say nature, when I'm painting anything, if I mix the exact same color, more important that I mix the exact same value. Because the color variation can actually add something. I used to, when I was first teaching, I remember I used to uh, refer to it as color charm. And what I meant by that is color variation, that it just doesn't get too posterized like one flat, clean color. Like it's, because in reality, um, nothing is that singular in terms of its, uh, its coloration. Kind of smearing it into that, that light sky, which I kind of like the way that edge is happening right there. Stepping back, okay, shaping up. And that comes down there. Kind of just jumble it in here because I've got whoops. So what happened? I didn't, when you don't mix, you get something like that occurs. Learn. I don't know if I've, I've used this phrase before in any of these, but it's something I realized that I think everybody, all artists um, need, to, need to do, and that is learn how to use your mistakes or your, your uh, perceived mistakes. By perceived, I mean, when you do something, you think it's wrong, learn how to use that. And the reason I say that is you're gonna make a lot of these mistakes. And some of them can work for you. And you will, the more you paint, the more you will begin to realize that, that some of these so-called mistakes can actually be an asset. Now, where did I learn that? I would love to say I learned that in school. I didn't. Um, I learned that as an illustrator. And I remember the first, I remember the, the, the project that I learned that on. It's odd how some of this stuff comes to mind, but, um, and it was a film poster, or actually it was a comp, film comp, comprehensive, that I was doing for the film, The Immigrants, with Max von Sydow, Liv Ullman, I forget who, it was what, their first film, probably the second or third, and I was doing it for Warner Brothers. And I remember what the art director in his office just diagram something that was just and said, do, you do a design that goes up this, it comes across the top. That was it. And leave space for comments for anything. So I went, okay. Being a, about a 24 year old um, young illustrator that was just happy to get work. Um, so I said, fine, no problem. So that's basically how I approached it. I did that, I designed kind of a kind of a mixture of elements that were from the film. And while I was doing, I didn't know what color I was gonna do. I had no idea. Now you notice I went a little darker here because we're bringing it forward. Um, so I didn't know what color I was gonna do. And I just started working and I did some things that, oh God, I, why did I use that color? So I would just take a color and go over it, but. It, what I found out is some of that, that color that I didn't want came through and it added some sort of, here we go again, color charm. It added that uniqueness that I wouldn't have thought of had I really planned everything. So I allowed what would have been considered a mistake to work for me. Now, the hard part is when I went to the large they approved that and they asked me to do the final. And 
the hard part was rematching that because I had to remember that what I did is when I started it, I actually made mistakes. <laughs> and I had to go back and kind of recreate those. That was hard. But now I kind of keep that kind of thought process in mind. So if I mess up on a color, I want that tree right there. Um, what, if I mess up on a color, I'll keep in mind the fact that I underpainted it maybe in the wrong color and then came over it and allowed some of the, that what you might consider that wrong color to come out and become influential in either the, that it's coming through or that um, little pieces of it happen to come through. So just interesting how you come across and learn things as you paint. You learn as much, and I use this a lot when I teach, you learn a lot as much, I believe, from your mistakes as you do from what you do right. Whoops, there's a mistake. Somehow, I, as I was messing with the paint, I was mixing these colors up too close to my um, palette, and I picked up a little bit of the alizarin crimson uh, by accident. Didn't mean to, but who knows? Let's see. Well, we, it might come through and create a whole new form of charm that I wasn't even anticipating, huh? Getting a little dry, so I had to add a little bit more turp and a little bit more medium to the paint so I can get it to flow a little bit better. Now, as it comes down here, you know, that color that I have underneath actually might work pretty well. Right, move, as we move down in here, we get a lot of growth, different, it's very dense on this side of the tree. Over here, there's some trees over there. Just kind of flock them in right now. We don't get all the trees in. Um, doesn't matter because I know you won't tell and I won't tell either. Very dry paint, very dry, not thick, just kind of fuzzed up. But I'm getting that layering. I think you can, I hope you can see it. It's coming off on the camera that this is standing out in front of this, which is standing out in front of this, which is really the, the what I'm after more than anything. Um, and then I want one more layer before I really get into the this front layer. And the, this layer is some of these trees that are right in here. And for that, I'm just going to take some medium, some turp, some blue, some of my unbleached titanium, or white, either one. If you don't have unbleached titanium, you could use white. And I'm going to go a little bit darker, incrementally darker. So I'm not going just a big jump, just a little bit darker. I think I might be too dark too fast, but let's give it a shot probably a little more than I wanted. So I threw some more unbleached titanium in and maybe a little bit of blue because it was looking a little too warm for my taste. So let's try this. Eh, not quite dark enough. One more try. That should do it. Very subtle. Again, I hope you can see the difference. I'm gonna step back. I think you can. Um, but see, I don't wanna to go too dark because I want that to be my darkest if I can help it. I may have to even push that a little darker. And we're gonna go down with some of these trees down in here. Some of the growth, the foliage that happens down in this area. There's a little bit of glare. It is getting glare. Let's see if I can. Do this and it might help the glare. Does that help? It's as far back as I can push it. Maybe a little bit. Pardon? Maybe a little. Uh, what brand of medium are you using and what's the um, approximate ratio to the turp? Good question. Uh, I just dip my brush in each one. 
I don't know if that helps. Uh, I, a little more medium ferret than terp. And the medium, I have two mediums laid out. I have, uh, actually, I'm, I don't even have the uh, solvent free gel laid out in my palette. I have oh. some, some uh, refined linseed oil mixed with the liquid form of solvent free gel on, in a little jar here. And that's what I'm kind of dipping my brush into. I'm not a creature of habit too much. I, I really try things and find things through that. You know, you, you find a lot just by trying some things. And um, one of the nice things is when I, in doing these afternoon uh, Friday paintings with you guys, I learn a lot because I try things that I'm not quite sure if they're going to work. I get myself in a hole and try and pick myself out of it, which is what a lot of people say is the best way to, uh, for paintings to, I should say not paintings, but for you to produce paintings of some sort of quality. So we're gonna take, and I'm gonna take kind of the idea of that shadow, which is a little bit lighter. So I just added some white, some blue, and we're gonna come right here. Come up here, push it back into that area. And I've already contaminated that color. So I'm mixing a more white, more blue. Went a little too blue there, but I could counter that with a little warm. And we'll come up here and it gets a little warmer. So I'm gonna bring a little bit of, of um, which darkens it by the way, a little bit of burnt sienna into it and that darkened that color. So I had to add some white to keep it in the same value range. up here and we got these shadows kind of working their way down here working their way under the trees okay anything else kind of soften soften it as it moves back onto the hillside and let's see what else that feels okay to me um there are some trees over here that i do want to get in they're right they work their way down here and they're right in here. So it's kind of a fun free brush. You just kind of let your brush do the work. Don't overpaint it. In other words, let that let there be paint strokes as opposed to um, as opposed to let there be light. Uh, Paint strokes are not a bad thing, unless you're trying to do something ultra realistic, then obviously they're terrible. Um, so we everything is sitting back nicely, but we wanna get this tree to stand out a little bit more, all right? So what do we do? We gonna, I'm gonna take sap green, a little bit of burnt sienna, into the color I was just working with. Now, what I want, need to do is I need to test. I'm gonna go darker right, right now. Sap green, burnt sienna. Sap green goes real green on you. Burnt sienna softens it down and makes it a little bit more palatable for a um, kind of a muted palette painting, which is, which is where this is kind of sitting. So that feels better. Let's see. What I'm really gonna be able to tell is right here. Nope, still not getting enough jump. Try it one more time. There we go. I'm gonna probably have to go a little darker there is what it's gonna come down to. So that nice edge I'm getting is just by kind of pushing my brush around and not, let, not trying to paint a perfect edge. Here, here. I, I could almost paint the whole tree in that color and just add, probably would be better than to try and leave light spots. So I almost ran out of paint. So I put more sap green, a little bit more uh, burnt sienna and a little bit more of the residue of my paint.
real close value, which is, I'm usually good at contrasting value, not real close. So it's really a, an accomplishment in, in many respects for me to keep the values this close. I often don't, much to my dismay, if I need to lighten edges, I will do that. Uh, the trunk of the tree, we're gonna kind of at least indicate approximately where it goes. It's gonna come down from here. How does that feel? Fair. A um, little bit more blue in that color now, which is going to darken it. I need to add a little light as I do that because I don't want it to go there. And we want to go with this tree right here. That's about the right color too. But Tom, I actually hit the right color the first try. It's close values. Uh, close value painting is just a Wonderful, wonderful exercise, everybody. It really is. It really forces your eye to discern between uh, very, very subtle value shifts and color shifts simultaneously. So we're gonna leave it, it goes higher. I want it higher, I want it up there. It needs to be higher than that rough line up about there. Just going to make that about there. Okay, pretty good. Not as not exactly where I want it, but not bad. So we basically have dealt with pretty much the lights. Uh, excuse me, the darks. And what I did is I added, took some of the blue I was just using here, the bluer color, and mixed it back in here and there on this tree to give it a little bit more variation, simply because I, I was starting to look real flat to me. Okay. So I'm gonna, for the first time, I'm gonna clean my brush right now. And I, I, it's, it'll be clean, but not thoroughly. There's still a little bit of residues. If you look, nothing much comes off it. If I press hard to see, you can get a little residue off it. But what I wanna do is I wanna start to get some of the lights in to, to get it working. I'm not, not gonna worry up in here. That's the value that I want up in here. But I do, I am gonna need um, some lights to contrast this. So that's very close to a Naples yellow. But Naples yellow is gonna be a little bit too strong all by itself. So I'm gonna use the unbleached titanium to gray it. and whatever residue I have in the brush. Now to that, I'm adding medium. Now that I look at it, I think I need to add a touch of yellow ochre. Maybe a little bit more, a little turp because it's kind of gooey. I don't want it, if I keep it at that consistency, I'm never gonna cover the whole thing. Is that about what I want? I can go a little bit more, nape, more of the uh, ochre into it. And it's a little bit of a greener color back here. Up here, it's a little warmer. So I'm gonna start with that. And I don't want it that flat at the end. More ochre and more, With a little bit of a grayer color if I can. How can I get a grayer color? Let's throw a little blue into it. I'm gonna cover a lot of, a lot of territory. So I mixed in a little bit of the, this tree color back into it helps harmonize it and it keeps it from looking too darn flat. I'm mixing 
some other colors into it and mixing a little bit of sap green, a little bit of, of um, unbleached, not unbleached, uh, asphaltum. as much of that covered as we can. So I have a covering on it. We want to get, you know, that initial lay-in uh, as accurate as I possibly can. Probably goes a little too colorful up there so I can take some blue, kind of push it right into that color. And just, just the action of the intermixing of two or three different colors in there is adding some character to this, which is really necessary. Otherwise it'll get to be a big flat, which I don't want it to be. And I actually thought about designing a road that might do this. I just don't think I'm gonna have the time. So with that in mind, um, I think I'm about where I wanna be on this part right here. And we got a little bit of some things happening here. Okay. So I don't want to spend too much time on that. I do want to get behind the barn, which is going to be a little duller and a little greener. So I'm going to basically take the same color, add a little bit of green to it, the sap green. Let's test this. Nope, more. Let's try this. That might work. I'm going to use a combination of sap green, um, a little bit of the unbleached titanium, a little bit of ochre together. And we're going to start right there. So we're going to kind of paint this back hill leaving this space vacant, which is a cooler. It's because it's dirt. It's not, um, it's either, yeah, I think it is dirt. Uh, it, it's not uh, a field of, of weeds. And we'll go up here. <laughs> Try and hit the edge of that tree so it has a nice character to it. Stepping back, it's okay. Doesn't knock me out, but it doesn't bother me either. So let's put it that way. Tree holes. Just I'm approximating where they go. I think that's about right. It's going a little green, so I'm bringing a little bit of, of unbleached, uh, not unbleached, I'm bringing a little bit of the asphalt and back into it. Just warming it up slightly. We want this to have this nice continuity all the way over here. Okay, so trees down below. Let's get as much of this in as possible. So big, right there. Above it, above the it is the barn. A lot of little light coming through back here, hitting on the hill and up and under this tree. Let's take a look at our time. Okay, not quite half. A little bit 
a little bit behind. And that probably has more to do with the scale than anything. Okay. Oops, it's kind of sloppy. Let's go on this side of the barn. So we get a little bit in here, a little greener, too green. Let's see where we're at here. This side of the barn is going to be about here. And we get these kind of, that's grayer, not quite as intense. And there's some in-between tones that are just really nice back here. It's not quite as dark as the hill and not as light as the light. And so he, coming up with that value is tricky. I'm still using, I'm using a little bit of blue and a little bit of the um, burnt sienna together. And I want to come in with, there, that looks pretty good. There, this side of that tree. So it's a little bit of a transition. It doesn't, it isn't just an abrupt tone. There's some subtlety. Subtlety is what's going to really start to pull this thing off if I can get it working exactly right. Not even exactly right. If I just get it working pretty right. <laughs> okay. So we're going to leave that alone right now. Not going to dwell too much on any of this stuff at present. What I am going to do is do a little bit of work up in here so I don't have to go back to it later. So I'm going to take the green, darken the color, and the asphalt, or not the asphalt, and the uh, burnt sienna. And I'm going to start to test. That's just about right. Probably could be a little lighter, so I'll take unbleached titanium. And we'll try, and a little green. It has a greenish cast to it. Right there. We hit it up here, down here. That looks to be about right. Probably a little lighter. Just a little bit more green, a little bit more unbleached. So we're going to try this. Probably a little too light right there. But there's a strong light there. There is a... I'm constantly remixing that color. You guys can't see it, but because I thought, well, it was a little too light, so I darkened it a little bit. Now I might be a little too dark. No, it seems to be okay. I'd rather have it a little too dark and not... I don't want it to jump too much yet. If I want that, I will really want that more towards the completion. And in which case I would push some of those lights just a little bit further. But at this stage, that feels pretty good. Let me step back. Value wise, it's okay. Color-wise, I'm not sure. Value, it's, it's pretty good. And we got a lot of, it's catching a lot of different pieces of foliage. So it's a matter of learning how to take your brush and gingerly put it down. And in this case, it might really help if I had a little bit of that shadow color mixed up, which I don't, because I've destroyed that. I kept mixing back into it. So I'm trying to re-kind of mix that. I think I'm pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. Just keep the, another brush handy. There we go. A little bit of that going on. Lock down in here.
but get just enough of that going so we get it feeling like it's correct. Pay for feeling, not for accuracy. You'll drive yourself crazy if you try and paint for accuracy when doing this kind of stuff. Whether you're doing a super long painting or whether you're doing a, just a, a quick plain hair. It's a matter of learning how to keep this word in your, in your mind, in your vocabulary. And that's the word is indication. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're doing indications, which is a form of what impressionism is. It's indicating with color. Got to be careful we don't spend all our time. I could easily see where I could spend all my time. And I took some more on bleach. I can come up with a little bit of a lighter color because I see a little piece of light sneaking out right there as I do right. And it's just a piece of the ground that faces upward a little bit more. Mix that in with that color and I can hit. You could go with two or three more levels of variation, but right now I don't have the time. So I'm gonna go a little bit more, add some blue to that color. So I wanna go right about here. A little bit, this really has a blue green cast. So a little bit more blue and we'll try one more time. And it's, it's like there's a little road or something up there. I don't know, I can't quite tell what that is. I think that is a road actually. Probably went too light on that. Just, I, I'm looking at it and that's kind of the way it feels. So I'm just gonna trim it down. And there is, some light working its way down. Whoops, God, that's too, that's just too yellow. I want it, it needs to stay colder and greener. That's a little bit better right there. Hate it when I make mistakes. But I just got through telling you, you gotta learn how to make your mistakes work for you, so. It's a wonderful mistake. Let me get up in here. Yeah, it works okay. Not as, not quite as good as I would hope it would, but I'm gonna, now I'm gonna put this road in one more time. And Mix that color back into this, and we'll bring it down from here. Down on that plane, on that plane, a little bit over a trees. A lot of busyness. It's really busy. So we, you got busyness. With busyness, you got to keep the right color and the right value, but you got to do a lot of marks because. The, it's, the number of marks is what amplifies that busyness and makes it work. So we're hitting the edge of these two trees right here. And that goes back to the concept of always know what you're painting. As you, as you look at whatever subject it is that you are painting, know exactly what you're trying to you know, it's because it's very easy to get really lost when doing something like this. Okay, the, it, it's starting to feel like it's working. I was looking for the right words, but that's, those are really the words I want. Like it, like it is working. Now it's real vacant up in here, so we've got to get some stuff going up in here. A little cooler right at this point. Nope, not dark enough. That's better. 
And by pushing it, by keep stroking it, I'm pushing it back into the color that's there, which is darkening it without me having to really mix an entirely new color. Top of a tree or top of a shrub right about here. Over. I want to get enough light as it goes behind this foreground tree because that's going to show the tree off. We step back. It's working. Ask me if it's working. Great. No. That's my answer. It's working good enough. I know it just needs a lot of layering. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just kind of blotch things in here, knowing that I will come back and do some sort of, make some sense out of those strokes. And sometimes I want the strokes just to be almost, for lack of a better word, like an abstract stroke, just to, because what that'll do is it'll allow me to keep my focus back on my subject which the subject is really the barn, the tree, this whole foreground. So this could all be quite fun and free and some trees right in here I want to hit. As it goes behind, nope, I'm starting to get too light now. I don't want to get as light as this. Okay, let's go back into this one area right here where these trees are a little bit more pronounced. Probably a little too light on that edge, but maybe not now that I look at it. Be a little bit more careful as we come closer, simply because the closer you come to the foreground, the more we should be able to distinguish exactly what we're seeing. Now you can see how we're popping that tree out where it may not have looked dark enough in the beginning, but this is where you have to know where you're headed as you're painting. Because everything that you're doing in almost all stages of your painting, and I, I mean this literally, is a setup for the next stage. A lot, of, a lot of light on the top of these trees right in here. Went a little too, I went through a little more green into it. I, can, I could have added blue or green. I happened to add green there. a little lighter up in here because we just want the edge of those trees. Just barely let my brush touch. Okay. Okay, it's starting to work. I wish it was working better, but I probably would say that no matter what. You always want your painting to be better, right? You're always going, well, you know, God, if, just if I would do this. And it's one of the, it's one of the things that teaches you something 
when you paint plain air is because you just do not have the time to sit there and perfect everything. Unless you're gonna go back day in and day out and do it two or three days in a row, then that's a different story. That's, that's more like a studio painting on location. Which is wonderful. If you guys have the time and the weather is conducive enough for you to be able to go back two or three times, do it. I'm going to put a little bit of an edge on that tray, a little bit of a light edge. I'm not getting it. Let me try one more time. Pushed it too. I went a little too far with it, but. A bit of interior modeling because it's foreground tree. Okay, let's leave it. Let's go into this tree. Good, because I'd like to get that done and have the last 30 minutes to kind of concentrate on refinements of that foreground area. One thing I want to do is get this worked out just a little bit better. This is that little, boy, when you spend your time and get all, all this neat picky stuff done, you can really make it. If it's set up properly, it's the payoff. You can really get it to work. If it isn't set up properly, no matter what you do. It's kind of like, kind of like figure painting. I look at that very much that way. If it isn't set up properly, I don't care what you do to it. I mean, proportions off, your proportions off. So you can do the best modeling in the world on a, on a figure piece. But if your proportions off, you know, it's one of the things when I look at figurative work a lot of times that I see, I'll see a really nice painting and all of a sudden I'll see the hand is way too big, way too small, misdrawn. I'm trying to hit, I'm trying to, I think I want to brighten that even further, but for right now, I'm going to stay with that. I'm trying to hit the edge of this tree. Probably a little too light there, but I'm going to live with it for a second. Definitely too light. Make it a little darker as we move towards the center, because it's not getting the same kind of light. The center would be like than here. That's still too. A little bit more green, green, and just a little bit of the. Uh, a little bit more. Wow, thought I had it. That's good. As we move into the interior parts, this tree needs a little bit more work on it than these trees in the background, just because it's it's more of a focal point, more of where your interest is really more up front. That is the right color, finally. Took me three, three cracks at it, but I eventually got to it. Step back. It's okay. Some lighter areas I can see really beautiful right about here. A little bit lighter in here. A little bit of the background up in here coming through right down here. More light on this tree back here. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone for a second. I'm gonna start in all of this area because I want, want to finish with this. So let's go back to uh, my small brushes. Let's go. I think I'm gonna get this ground plane in first. And I think the first thing I'm gonna do is add the darks, which is gonna come about here. Nope, 
this got to come up higher. That's pretty good. You know, I switched to a more of a controlled brush at this point. Because of where I'm at in the painting. Okay, let's get some more darks right at the one. Pretty dark, but without going all the way to as dark as I can go. Kind of neutral. And it's a little warmer. So I throw a little bit of extra. Un, um, not unbleached, a little bit of extra um, burnt sienna into it at this point. I want that roof line to come down a little lower. There we go. I want the symmetry of the roof line. This is where drawing becomes more important. It's a, and I've got it about where I want it. Bring it down and then do the underside, which looks to be about here. And it looks like it curves up just a little bit at the end because none of these barns, these roofs are. As I stand back, it looks pretty good, but I think the peak should be a little bit more like that. Okay. So going back to the base, which is a little cooler and a little lighter, very subtly. I'm sure uh, when you look at it on the screen, you can't see that, but. I just, if I need to cool it, I just throw a blue. And I'm gonna bring Okay, now there's some darks in it. Those I'm gonna to reserve to go darker. And the darks, it's a big opening right here as there are in most barns. It's just blue and brown mixed into the same color I was using, so it's dark. And it looks like there's some hay bales in front of it, which is kind of nice. I kind of like, I don't know if I can pull that off, but I'm gonna give it a try. Big opening right here. And on this side. But top of it, whoops. It's more like here. And these are all hay bales. And what they are, just a touch lighter. So I don't know if I can pull it off. Let's, I'm gonna try to, as I said, here. Nope, not light enough, a little bit. I'm not gonna leave it like that for right now. It's all I'm gonna have time to, to play with. A little bit, get a little bit of interesting coolness on the top of that doorway. Whoops, went too light there. And let's get this side of the barn, which is lighter than this side, right? So let's bring some Naples, or it's not some little bit of unbleached titanium, ochre, uh, but it's not hot. So we wanna keep it somewhat cool. That's too light. That may be just about right. I'm 
got about 30 minutes left, so I think we're okay. Never can tell. A little darker as it goes back here. And there's some light. I don't know what, what it's from. It's maybe just coloring. It maybe it just adds some activity. I always like to find things like this that keeps it from looking too much like a piece of monopoly. Um, or it's just a, your vacant house, vacant piece of architecture. Okay, so leave that alone. Let's get the roof. Now, one of the things that I begin to see, I have got to take this and move it back. There we go. The roof is cool. It's probably one of the coolest parts. Cool, not being really neat, cool, but being temperature cool. So I've used a little bit of the unbleached titanium, ultramarine blue, and it's way too blue. A little, little too off the. I want it to be more harmonious. So I brought a little bit more brown back into that blue. Value looks to be about right. Let me take a look. I could be lighter. I can tell you right now. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'm okay. I want to parallel that. And I can I can do that in two ways. I can do it with the positive stroke that I just or I can actually use the negative of the background and recarve that. I'm going to go a little darker at the top just because I want it to stand out. A little darker still. It's probably too dark, but maybe not. That works enough for me. Now I can brighten up a little bit. I've just noticed as it comes forward right here, it tends to get a little brighter. And if I want it to stand out in the back, I can darken it or I can show you another thing I can do. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it a different way. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna lighten it with some unbleached. <clears throat> Titanium, and I'm gonna take mix it right in with that. I want to parallel that, so I want this to come more that way. And I think I've just about got it. If I need to, I can clean this edge up. Now it's got a little bit of looks like some either stains or openings, but they look pretty even. So they look like they kind of go. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. And a little bit of a light on the edge. There. Let's get this light back. Didn't hit it enough. One, two. Okay, Got, you need enough information in that building where it doesn't feel like I've just painted um, a shape. And that's my own personal hang up with the uh, with buildings, is I like them to feel complete. I don't like them to just feel like uh, whether it's I'm going to darken this edge by the way, and darken this edge. Too dark. So I just push it back in the paint. There we go. Now it's got a nice gradation. So let's get some of the ground plane going on, okay? I think that's really important. Uh, I want to get that tree in, but it's going to overlap that fence. So why put it in now? We started to get this in. It's not quite dark enough. I'm going to do it one more time. That's too dark and too colorful. So I'll just take some white and some unbleached titanium 
and just kind of come back over it a little bit. There we go. I want that barn to come down overlap, which it isn't doing now. Okay, now it is. So we got this other little house back here. Let's get that in. Right here. And the roof is just a little bit lighter. And that's good enough. And it continues on through here. It's a little cooler, and there's a little bit of a structure, which I really kind of like, I don't know, chicken coop or whatever it is back here, about this level. So I'm gonna put that in, get that angle in, probably a little bit too severe, a little bit more like that. blue. Try and get some, okay, I go back to one of my big brushes. And we're gonna get this foliage in. It's a combination of a little bit more blue in it. But it's got some unbleached, I mean, I keep wanting to say unbleached, it's got some, uh, um, Asphalt in there also. I don't want it to get too warm. I want everything to be harmonious color wise. So we're going to. There it works. And take the bottom of that tree. Bring it that way. So I'll have to do the refinement on the tree. Now let's get some of those ground plane shadows. They're kind of neutral. First one would come right from here. That looks like about the right color, right value. Right paint consistency so I can make it in a movement. Okay, that looks okay. And let's do it on this side. So I see it here, thin. I picked up a lot of that color as it moved along and in doing so it lightened up a little too much. So I'm going darker and coming from this side We'll just leave it. Okay, so right at the base of the barn, which is right about here, we're getting a little bit of a shadow. Not quite that dark, but right now, bakers can't be choosers, so I've got to get it as good as I can and then keep moving. And it's over on this side, and I see it going this way a little bit. Okay, and get back to the warmer of the two, which is fine. We're gonna go right, no, right there. I need some, a little bit more turp into it because it's, I'm not getting the extended stroke that I need. Now we're gonna start to get some of these down in here. And it comes across. That's working. That's about the right color, almost 
crap, it's about times so I got the right color, right value at the same time. A little lighter. So I gotta put the lights back in there. But where are we at? Oh, I'm okay, I think. I'm gonna put these longer ones in right here. So we're painting into wet paint, that, which means I need a lot of turp, a lot of medium into my paint. All right, and we're gonna probably went a little darker than I needed to. So I lightened up on the next one. I keep stepping back because I've got to double check that in conjunction with my reference. And there's a little bit of a light right here. I mean, a shadow, <coughs> not a deep shadow. And it goes over here and then it fades up. So Diana would like you to explain what high key is. High key. High key means there's not a lot of darks into it. It's that simple. High key is light. And it's generally where the majority of your painting, I can't tell you how much, but the majority of your painting is lighter than what we would call a 50% gray which would be a middle gray. Which is what this is. Nothing is real heavy and dark in this. Now high key can be real high key or high key can be something like this where you don't have a lot of super definite darks into the painting. Everything tends to be a little bit more. Um, Lighter in value. That's the word I was looking for, or words, lighter in value. I, need a, I can't do it with that brush. I need a more of a control brush. Same color. It's kind of blue, a little bit of. I don't want this quite as light. Now I want it light. I got a lot of little stuff I've got to fuss around with here right, right at the very end. So if I'm not talking a lot, it just means I'm trying to uh, adhere to my time frame. And the same kind of white color I don't like that sweep, which I think I'm going to take care of in a little bit. This is more of the control stuff happening right here at the end.
And let's see if I have the right color, or close to the right color, which I think I do right about here. I'll cut this up. Let's start to add a little bit of some of the tree stuff back in here. A little bit of stay pretty dark. There, we'll get that little fence in right at the very end, the last thing I'm gonna put in. So don't let me, if you guys, one of you guys shout out, remind me, would you? <laughs> to put the fence in? Yeah, if I say I'm done, say, what about the fence? And some of those verticals I can put in, because some of the man-made stuff adds, in this case, the fact that people live here, I'm gonna put that, if I can, I'm gonna use this. We're gonna go right here. And another one right, I don't want them evenly spaced as they are in the in reality. So I'm gonna do one there, one. there and one closer to that. So we're gonna do it about here. And let's hit it. Okay, now tree trunks back here. And then let's work on this tree trunk. What do we got here? Oh, we've got about 10 minutes. A little bit, some, a few subtle lights in it, slightly cool. And I may have to throw a couple darks. Why did you pick that reference today? Why did I pick it? Yeah. I've, I've been looking at this for about three weeks and um, I've thought about doing it and finally, I decided yesterday, actually, this is one of the, where I didn't decide the day out, I actually decided yesterday. This, I'm hell with that. Because each week I show Anna, I said, what do you think I gotta do? What do you think I gotta do? And I always show her this one, she always ignored it. So I figured <laughs> I didn't ask her and I figured I'd just do it. And so it's a little more challenging. And um, I thought it warranted the scale. Why did I think that? There's a lot of little stuff in it. Fence in. Almost 10 minutes, not quite. So we're going to take dark blue and the asphaltum, and I'm mixing it into a mixture I already have, which is lighter. And I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably do this freehand here. Feeling of a fence back there. These man made elements, another little piece of, I like the interruption of this. I don't even know what it is. 
but I like the interruption of that shape. Um, breaking there, go back to the fence color. Now, because this is going to be a little longer, eh, I'm going to use something else. Let me use this small stick here. I don't want to press it on the paint. So I'm going to hold it up here. And I want to do it right about here. And it's going to come from behind the tree. And it's going to go over to behind the barn. And put in some of the structure that holds it. And a little bit more up in here. And there's a, I've got to add that little structure right. I like it's leaning too. I like the back right about here. And it goes lighter, catches light up the top. So I can actually go back to some of my light colors that I already have in my palette. Almost doesn't matter which one. And just it's above this tree. So I can actually kind of go in and go a little bit of light right there. And bring it down. And add and this do the same a little bit more right here. And I'm going to go in on this tree now and clean up a little bit like that little hole. It's a branch goes that way. And add a couple more little tree holes, but I'm right back in here. So I'm gonna step back and see what it is else I think I need to do to it. It's it's coming together. It's it's not together 100 percent the way I'd like it to be, but it's um it's approaching that. So I'm going to take and mix up another warm color right here. And a little bit of snap. I'm going to pronounce some of this area back in here a little bit more. Probably should have done a lot of this before I messed with the um, poles. So add just a little bit of snap. I can see a little bit right here. That will work. And if I clean that just a little brush, I can take the same and be a little bit more precise with it. Come in a little bit there, there. You just this is where you just take things and push it a little bit further. That's what I was saying about up in some of those regions. So I'm basically just doing little touch-ups, things that I I can see a lot of little things. Um, working a little bit more on that foreground. I don't like that heavy, heavy stroke right there. So I might try and divide that up actually, and just take this brush. See if I can do it. Come in. You don't want any of that to be too heavy. And if it's wavery, that's okay because it's a um it's a field of weeds.
couple last strokes and we're gonna call it. <clears throat> Now, as I stand back, everything tends to work pretty well. There are things that I think I could improve upon, um, and that's always the case. But I think one of the things I can improve on is I can make the barn stand out more simply by doing this. Just by pronouncing the light behind it. And that's one of the things that I can kind of end this whole little session and talking a little bit about. Sometimes it's not, this is an old Don Putman quote, uh, sometimes it's not just what you're painting, it's what's beside it, what's around it. And if sometimes the adjustment doesn't need to be with the object that you're painting or the subject that you're painting, it can be with the, the area that surrounds that subject. And that in itself can actually add um, a lot to the painting just by lightening a background, darkening a background, whatever, whatever you feel is necessary, do it. But that takes judgment and uh, that judgment can only be acquired through repetition. There's not a, people want to know, well, I don't, someone asked me uh, just recently, can you teach me to do uh, a, a, a painting that I had posted? I had a a question about, could you teach me to do that? And it was two figures and they were on the beach. And I went, not quickly. <laughs> yeah, I can, but not quick. It's one of those things. It's gonna take some time to learn how to do that and to do it to where you're happy with it. Um, because you have a lot to deal with. You have environment to deal with. You have figures to deal with, the anatomy of the figures. You have all these things that you have to concern yourself with. So it's not just one thing. Plus the combination of the type of brush strokes you're gonna be using, um, color value, everything comes into play there. So truthfully, that's something that you all need to think about. You can't acquire all these abilities all at one time. Um, you know, it's, it's a step-by-step -step process and some people pick it up faster, some people take slogger. And, and who the heck cares? I mean, other than patience, if you don't have the patience for it, then boy, you know, I don't know. I, was it somebody recently asked me uh, about getting frustrated all the time? And I said, don't become an artist then. Um, because it's just part, it goes with the territory. And You've heard me quote my old friend, Don, Dan McCaw. And I will quote him right now. And that is, every artist needs to learn how to make frustration their friend. I love that quote. It is so apropos. I can't even, there's no way I can even say how true that is because it's outrageously true. Every artist I know uh, gets frustrated. And if you don't let your frustration get the best of you, realize that frustration is part of the learning process. And with that, I will pretty much call this one more or less done. I will thank Scott, thank Anna, thank you. And we'll see you next week and we'll do something a little different. Okay. Bye everybody, happy painting.